I would like to take a moment today to speak with you about the coming battle. I know you might ask yourself, what battle? We've got a million of them. And of course, believers in the audience rightfully see our spiritual journey as containing regular battles. In fact, those are our primary battles. The battle to sacrifice, the battle to be humble and meek, the battle to boldly speak the word of Elohim. Believers also see battles with the demonic in our lives. And while I tend to believe cases of true possession today are greatly exaggerated, demonic possession and oppression are real phenomenon and we battle them. Yet the battle I speak of today is not that spiritual battle, although it rests upon it, as do all things in our lives. It is a simple battle we will face in the future to maintain natural law, and to remain our own species, to stay human. It is clear that we are not just coming upon, but have already arrived at a time when our technology, and sadly our will, enables us to blend our very human natures with other natures. It allows us to blend it with inorganic nature by combining man and machine. It allows us to combine ourselves with animal nature by combining man and animal, especially through genetic engineering. It is perfectly reasonable to see a future where we are not recognizably human, or at least where some of us are not. After all, how easy is it to recognize the humanity in a cyborg or a computer brain? How easy is it to recognize the humanity in a pig, which has been crossed with a man? I don't think it's so easy. We may face a future without a recognizable humanity. I write, of course, to comment on this, and in doing so, to counteract it. I know we come from a culture which is used to swallowing anything technological or scientific whole, or at least we view it as our destiny. But this need not be. In fact, it should not be. First, just to speak from common sense, the wisdom God gives to every man, what principles do we have to tell us how to treat a creature which is blended between man and organic matter, or man and animal? I don't see that we have any clear principles nor do we find a clear principle looking in scripture. Why then put ourselves in a position where no one could discern whether to treat us with human dignity and respect? I don't want to be in that position. Do you? For example, I might know how to treat with human dignity a man who has, say, a machine for a hand. However, I do not know how to treat with human dignity a machine that happens to have a few human organs. Sorry, guys but I probably wouldn't treat it with dignity, and I may toss it out with the trash whenever it seems fitting. Likewise, I may treat with dignity a man who contains one organ of an animal, yet when looking at a creature that looks animal but has 10% human DNA, may not recognize any humanity, and would be fine making it into a hamburger. I think you'd see things a similar way. If a man takes on machine or animal in more than a small amount, I think we can all agree we'd likely not see the human dignity there. We would cease to treat the creature as human. One can see it from the other perspective as well. Who is to say that a blended creature would view us as having dignity or deserving any high respect? They might, they might not. Just as science fiction writers have been writing for decades, a future of cyborgs could easily and may likely view us as the enemy. The same thing goes for a future of manimals. They may view us in the way a harmful virus does, or in the way a cancer does, or in the way raging hippo does. They may view us as something to feed off of, or something to destroy, or with no consideration at all. Therefore, why create this new breed? What need is there anyway? I'd also point out that natural law supports this position. Scripture may not spell this out for us, but Scripture and common sense do support natural law. In fact, Scripture specifically expounds on natural law in Romans 1. So one of the reasons I called you today to stand with humanity and stand against blending it is because the Lord our God made us human. It is to the core of our being. Not only that, but Hashem gave us His holy word to human beings. He gave his instructions for life to human beings. He gave his moral principles to human beings. He died for human beings and called human beings to believe in his Son. 
Part of our relationship with our Creator is simply as who we are, as man. So why alter that? Perhaps this is one thing Torah hints at when it tells us not to blend one fabric in with the other in making clothes, or not to sow two kinds of seeds together in sowing a field. Leviticus 19.19 19. Perhaps it is hinting at the importance of our core nature being one and only one. Just as our spiritual life should be only Yeshua and not Yeshua plus mammon, so our natural life should be only human and not human plus pig. Now I want to clarify a few things in making this strong opposition against technologically blending our natures. Firstly, I'm not being anti-technology here. True, any use and development of technology should happen within the ethical restraints of the moral law. But technology is a useful tool and our Creator gave us the brains to use it. I'm using a piece of 20th century technology as I write this short essay, The Laptop Computer. Let's just keep our natures our natures, and our tools are tools. Also, and this is important, I'm not preaching against any and all enhancements of the human body. Christian ethics has always accepted in harmony with natural law that believers can use certain enhancements. For example, in the case of dire, life-saving situations, we might use a pacemaker. In the case of weariness or pain, we might take a mild stimulant or a painkiller. I do not think that carefully selected cases such as this define nature and our Creator. I realize this does leave a line which needs to be drawn as to what cases are acceptable and what cases are not, but I believe we can, especially in concert with our ministers and sincerely believing leaders, draw those careful lines. Many would point out that steroids, for example, are well beyond the natural, and I would agree. Regardless of any rules that sports leagues put in place, some of these enhancements are simply too much. Another thing I want to clarify is that while I am speaking out against blending human nature, I do believe that we have an active place in the cyber world, even in a portion of our identity. What am I talking about? Instead of actually blending our natures with machine, I am pointing to something which has begun already, the communication of ourselves through the cyber world, even the long-term dominion there through an avatar. There is no true blending there, at least as I can see, and this avatar existence can be an extremely fruitful, albeit sometimes dangerous, way to have dominion in the digital universe. We can place our symbol there, we can place information from our mind there long-term, we can preach the word of Elohim there. I don't think I need to point out the parallel this has with how Elohim works in sending his perfect word from eternity into our world of time and space. Just as our maker acts in the world, and one time in history even took on flesh, so we can act in the digital world, even having a digital self, so to speak. This digital existence we can have without any real blending of our core nature. Seems appropriate and even beautiful, since we are made since we as man are made in God's image. We are made according to his likeness. He sends out his word and spirit. We send out a portion of our inner being. May God be praised. In some sense we have been doing this since God made us through language and writing. Today we do it through language and writing as well, just the digitalized kind. So I want to encourage you, friends, especially those who feel there is no avoiding the coming storm that there are great, godly, and faithful paths for us to walk in the future until we are taken up. None of them requires becoming half-machine. None requires becoming part of a canine. They only require keeping a steady stream of the Lord's wisdom in our lives, along with a core identity the Lord made, sustains, and saves. That means we still have a great adventure as man. We still have a chance in this coming battle. Let us trust in the God who made us to bring us to victory. God bless you, brothers. And remember our Savior, who died for us, was not just called the Son of God. He was also called the Son of Man. Peace unto you and him. Stay human.